15 women. I've been pregnant 21 times. I was gang raped when I was eight. 30 days. I'm gonna lose my mind in here. Absolutely gonna lose my mind. One last chance. I'm 32 years old. This is not my, my ideal life. Hands up and Bound by harsh discipline. I don't think you're gonna stay on chain. Heavy chains. You're making me feel like I'm the whole reason why this whole chain's messing up. And hard labor. On the inside, they fight to turn their lives around. If you guys want us to be hard asses, we can do that too. Welcome to the new chain gang, because the old chain gang is gone. And to survive newfound freedom on the outside. Can I go get high? This is the story of one month with the chain gang girls. Maricopa County's jail complex, Phoenix, Arizona. For 2,000 male and female convicts, this is hell on earth. Tent city, seven crowded acres of military surplus tents, outdoor jail 24-7, ruled by chaos, fights, monotony, and the temptation to misbehave. But for 15 chosen women, jail is something else a four-story adjacent cell block, Estrella Jail's D-Tower, home to America's only female chain gang. For convicted prostitutes, thieves, and drug addicts, this is boot camp. The chain gang girls serve brief sentences. For many, the chain is a chance to break cycles of addiction, incarceration, and abuse to go cold turkey off drugs, and to reform their lives for the first time. It's gonna be really hard to do, but I cannot have that attitude or else I'm gonna end up probably back here. The mastermind behind it all, the notorious sheriff, Joe Arpaio. They are convicted. I use the word punishment. You think I want them to like it? Think I'm gonna give them television and good food? took away their coffee, took away their cigarettes, took away their salt. I took all that away. Known for his controversial penal programs, Sheriff Joe brought back the once banned U.S. chain gang in 1996. And this time, he added women. Let's go, everybody out. You guys have your hair, all that crap done already. Day one of 30 with the chain gang. 5.45 a.m. The women line up. Each chain gang girl commits to the 30-day program, including holidays. And now, Thanksgiving is two weeks away. This is the second set of holidays I've spent in here. I want to do it again. It sucks here. The food sucks, the people suck. The deals suck. <laughs> I want to go home. 6 a.m., officers search every cell. Disorder, illegal items, drug paraphernalia, tobacco, weapons, any infraction can get a woman kicked off the chain for good. Ladies, you need to be out of your cells! One of four principal detention officers assigned to the chain gang, experienced Officer Lopez leaves no object unturned. A lot of the inmates will tell you that I'm the hardest one, I'm the toughest one, because I'm gonna make sure they're following the rules and I don't let them get away with anything. If they don't like it, then all they gotta do is follow the rules. Don't have um, extra items that you're not supposed to have. Why do we got more than one towel here, ladies? Who's special? That was me. So you're special? No, no, I'm not special. All right, for the ladies that are ready, you should be standing up next to the wall, backed up against the rail. In the program, Detention Officer Westfall emphasizes personal accountability. They need to start taking the responsibility for their own actions rather than trying to push it off on somebody else. Then when they go back out there into the real world, it'll prevent them from making some of the same mistakes. Chain one, step forward. 
Left face. Forward march. Chain three, step forward. Left face. Come on down. Every single chain gang girl is here by choice. She volunteered for one of two reasons. Most joined to gain structure and skills. It's, you know, exercise discipline, which I sorely need. You feel like you're actually doing something. You feel like you're actually accomplishing something. But some join to escape a punishment known as the hole, locked down in a closet-sized cell 23 hours a day. I got put in a hole, and I didn't want to be in a hole, so I came chaining. 6.30 AM, chaining up. One by one, the women are shackled together with 30 feet of unbreakable steel chains. There are three work chains in total, five women per chain. Just don't step on the chain, okay? Okay, step on the chain. You're gonna make me fall, step on the chain. The program is tough. Many participants never get the coveted certificate of graduation. Failure is a demoralizing blow complete with a ticket back to the volatile and unstructured tent city. All right, ladies, for the two new ones, pay attention. When we say check your marks, that means raise your right arm up, touch the shoulder blades of the person in front of you. That should be the distance you maintain from that person at all times. Each chain gang has one appointed chain leader. She exemplifies chain conduct, a model for the women to follow. Today, officers must appoint a new chain leader. I'm trying to pick somebody that I look at as they're already sort of a natural leader, somebody that the other inmates are gonna to listen to, they're gonna respect. The strong-willed 28-year-old Kylie Marks stands out. She's picked up the marching really good, and that's one of the hardest parts for the women on the chain. And she's just shown good leadership qualities. Other inmates seem to listen to her. We'll give you the shot. I'll try. That's all, I'm, that's all we're asking you to do. I'll try. Can't say that I'm going to do any good, but I'll try. My name's Kylie Marks. I'm in for possession of methamphetamine and possession of drug paraphernalia. This is Kylie Marks' 10th day on the chain. She's serving a three-month sentence. Nicknamed Louisiana for her home state, Kylie comes from an affluent family. I was spoiled rotten. Always had everything, clothes, cars, you name it, I had it. Lost it. When I turned 20, started smoking crack and really went downhill all within, lost everything within like a six month period, if even that long. I lost everything. I was introduced to a world that I didn't even know existed. I had no idea that this world existed. And it's a hard hole to climb out of. It's very hard. And it's like every time I'm slowly starting to get back on my feet, I just fall right back down. I could just do anything to bring that person back. The person that I was when I was like, before the drugs. As chain leader, Kylie's instructed to keep an eye out for any misconduct. Each chain gang girl must follow 10 strict rules, ranging from impeccable grooming to mandatory strip searches to no smuggled contraband. But when we're marching out of the building, if you see somebody that you know, don't start waving to them. Anything is considered contact. All right, ladies, check your marks. March time, march. Forward march. You sound like a galloping horse. You must not have practiced too much. You get off step when you slow down. Slow down. Keep going. You got it. Just keep going. Left, 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 right, right, left. Marching to the bus, the women sing in military style call and response. There are 19 cadences in total, all written by a former chain gang girl. Officers transport the women to a local Phoenix work site where they're assigned to collect trash and weeds. Okay. 
7.30 a.m., roadside cleanup. We'll start close to the street because that's where the public can see the result of what we're doing out here. Each of the three five women work gangs tackles its own stretch of road. Chain coordination is a constant challenge. Officer Higgins keeps them in line. I know it's hard because you're used to walking around without a chain. Well, you just need to make sure that you're communicating with each other, OK? Every officer has their own style, their own way of doing things that works best for them. I give them a chance to self-correct, and they don't get it. Then I'll speak up, and I'll say something. You know what? When you guys are moving that way, you guys don't say chain too Seriously, moving. Seriously, you guys need to knock it off. Just communicate with each other, OK? Because okay, when you guys are moving that way, you're not saying chain too move. We're back here. You guys are jerking on us. Every time they would walk, the chain would, they would pull on it, and it would get our ankles, and it would hurt. As the work progresses, tensions mount. Oh my God. Do you have your permission to come here? OK, you know what? I'm not going to move. Chain two moving, please. Okay. Thank you. The younger girls know everything. You cannot tell them nothing. They know it all. Nobody call anybody like, stupid. Call Get along on the call chain, call ladies. Call Learn how to cope with each other. Learn how to work together. 42-year-old Lisa Enriquez Garcia and 38-year-old Lori Henderson share a chain with 21-year-old Brittany Way and 20-year-old Desma Barber. Every day on the chain, it's hard for me to get along with older women, basically. They're behind me, they're yelling, they're, they think that they can boss me around. It's like, I don't want to be bossed around. My name is Desma Barber, and I'm in for a possession of marijuana. This is Desma Barber's third day on the chain. At 20, Desma's the youngest chain gang girl. She's currently serving six months after being arrested with two pounds of marijuana. I dropped out of school early. I was homeless for a long time. Some nights I went without food, without a place to sleep, and I took care of my younger sister while my mom was in prison. I was going down the wrong path, but now I want to change my life. Like, being here in the chain gang, I hope I change. But now, as Desma strives for success in the program, Festering conflict poses a growing threat to chain morale. Nobody called anybody stupid. Hey, uh, no, you not stupid? Like to me. No, it didn't. To Nobody's me, stupid me. on this chain. Me. We're not on this me. chain, so if you're stupid, then we're all stupid. You know what? Don't argue with me. But I'm not going to argue, no, argue with you Don't argue with me then. Lisa, stop. Don't argue. stop. Chain conflict can lead to violence. Okay, what's Officer what's Westfall intervenes. The more you want to sit there and throw a fuss about it, you look worse than the person that actually just stepped on the chain. Quit flailing your arms, turning around, giving dirty looks, acting like it's never happened or you never did it before. Henderson, do you think you can do a better job leading the chain? No, sir. Then quit acting like that. Have you stepped on people's chains before while marching? Yes, sir. All right, get over it. I have a comment. It's kind of hard for the chain when you have rocks under your feet for that chain not to go under your boot. I understand that, but you know what? There's 13 other girls on the chain. I get rocks under my boots all the time. Exactly. We're just getting tired of the same bullshit every single day. Get over the stupid shit and move on. Put a little effort into it, guys. It's not that hard. A lot of us have been on this chain a lot longer than other people. I've seen many a chains come before you guys that it has worked just fine. What do you need to say? Nothing. You're just mad. And you're making me feel like I'm the whole reason why this whole chain is messing up. It's not just you. But nobody else is deciding to backtalk the officers when they're trying to help you. If we didn't give two <laughs> we'd just say, fine, keep jerking her around. And when you two end up in a fight, then you know what? We'll end up that way. I'm not doing it on purpose, though. How many times do we have to tell you? Crap is going to happen. People are going to step on chains. Move on. Everybody check their marks. If we can make it back to the bus without screwing up, we'll be done. Sound off. One, two, sound off. Three, four. I was so mad. I was crying. I was, oh. If I could have punched him in his eye, I would have, but I couldn't. <laughs> Back at Chain Gang Headquarters' Estrella Jail D Tower, as the chain struggles to stay together, marching, a pivotal part of the program, is not going well. Officers have instructed them to practice. As newly appointed chain leader, 
Kylie Marks must keep the chain organized, leading marching practice and drilling the women in all 19 cadences. But can she save a troubled chain from breaking down? If the women fail to master marching, they could all get kicked off the chain for good. Ladies, fall in! Check your marks, let's go, let's go, let's go! It's like, I'm the president, I'm the dictator, I'm the queen, I'm what I say goes, and they kind of do follow the leader, follow the Kylie, it's kind of crazy. You guys, please, y'all are doing good, don't start. Shut it! What y'all don't understand? Check your marks. After an hour of practice, the women are forced to stop. Lock down, ladies. Jane Hope! Jane Hope. 3 p.m. lockdown. The women must spend the next 16 hours trapped inside their cells, including mealtime. Sitting here waiting for chow, we're hungry. They usually let us out to go get our dinner. <laughs> Make sure you don't get the roll from the bottom tree. Check this before you pick it all the way up. There you go. Thank you. Well, it's chicken slop. Chunks of chicken with the roll and pears and carrots. It's slop every night, so you get immune to it. That's not what I ordered. I don't want that. Make sure the roll doesn't come off the bottom tray. Okay. okay. Thank you. This is the little things that we take for granted when we're on the outside, like normal food. We really take that for granted. You don't stop to think, oh man, I could be sitting in jail eating this stuff. I don't know how we gain weight in here as little as they feed us, but we do. Friend, you could have some of mine oh, here. Oh, now, huh? Thank you. Lisa and Lori like, share a cell the size of a walk-in closet. When I first came here, I thought, right on. I sat on my bed, I'm by myself. There ain't nobody in here with me. And then here comes Lori around the corner. And she looked at me, I looked at her, I said, oh, no, not that lady. Oh, no. <laughs> Can't be with this white woman. Yeah, no, we don't talk to anybody else. She's my, she's cool, and we're cool. That's what's crazy about is we worked it out. I joined the Tang Gang because the yard was just too much for me. I, I mean, I have anxiety and well, I don't like women anyways, so yeah. <laughs> My name is Laurie Henderson. I'm here for possession of a forgery device. This is Laurie Henderson's third day on the chain. Laurie has been diagnosed as bipolar. On the outside, she self-medicated with crystal meth. In jail, she receives prescriptions for her extreme mood swings. When I don't take my meds, I'm psychotic. I have ups and downs, and I'm just, I'm crazy. I've been doing drugs for 20 years. I've tried and tried to get clean. My drug use is self-medicating. When I'm using, I don't take my medications, so. I got my kids taken away from me because of my drug use. So I've been fighting for almost three years to get my kids back. Lori is not alone. Others are kicking illegal drugs cold turkey. Many inmates battle anxiety, depression, and aggression towards others. And to make matters worse, women whose paths have crossed on the outside often find themselves face to face behind bars. Lori and the youngest chain gang girl, Desma Barber, have a long history. Desma's mom had sex with my 16-year-olds, and he was 16 when this happened. So, yeah, I wasn't very happy about that. Her mom was 53, my son was 16. Actually, how I found out is I'm the manager of the apartment complex where I live, and I went in to clean one of the apartments, and I found her blanket and my son's clothes in there and a bunch of condoms, and we put two and two together, and then I asked him and he told me. So. Desma knew what was going on, and she didn't say anything to me. So yeah, I wasn't very happy with her either. I told her what I thought, and she said, that's my mom. I have feelings too, and I'm like, I really don't care about your feelings. Okay, that's my 16-year-old son, so I'm not real concerned about how you feel. <laughs> For her part, Desma has long struggled with her troubled family background. Desma's mother was once a chain gang girl herself. I was mad at my mom because I had raised my little sister while my mom was in prison. I ended up here now. The same place where she started off at was in this jail. She was in chain gang once before, too. I missed out on 
just a mom teaching me how to act or everything that a mom should do for her daughter or her son, I missed out on. If I could have something special, I would want to be a musician. I love music. When I'm in my cell, I like to write music. This is one of them, and I wrote it myself. And it's a chorus, and then it's a rap. Two ways of saying I love you too much. Three days of pain, it's just not enough. I'll stick around, and damn, I'll be tough. I'll put it down and show you the love. Pray every morning so it goes smoothly that God blesses our our chain. <laughs> yes. Another way women pass the time during mandatory lockdown is with prayer, part of a struggle to break cycles of abuse and addiction in their outside lives. The last time I was here, I picked up the Bible, and I haven't set it down since. Then I'm setting to be a minister. Yet we stumble and we fall. You know, you're there to pick us right back up. My name is Alexandria Farrar. I'm here for robbery. 21-year-old Alexandria Farrar, nicknamed Lexi, is serving six months, punishment for robbing a gas station where she worked. For years, Lexi has struggled with repeated incarcerations, aggravated by a lifelong addiction to methamphetamines. I was eight years old when I started using methamphetamines. I was gang raped when I was eight. His sister, um, she introduced me to methamphetamines and shot me up, and that's the first time I ever did that. And that was, since then I've, you know, I got worse into drugs, I, I, I was cutting for a long time. Um, I just didn't know how to deal well with any of it. Brown? Yep, thank you. Henderson, have mail. Oh, I just got this picture um, from the DO who dropped off my mail, and this is the picture I've been waiting for. Lexi is a married mother of one. Her husband is also in jail. The much-awaited postcard is one of their only forms of contact. I haven't seen my husband in two years. This is the first time I've seen him in two years. My guardian angel. You know, I have one child by him. She's gorgeous. She looks like him. <laughs> now I have all my little pictures and my goals, and I just want to do well, because, you know, Pulling my family bag, so. The next day, 10 a.m., at a roadside work detail, Lexi reveals a surprising secret. Huh? You were eight and you told her she was yeah. hot? <laughs> yeah, I consider myself a lesbian most of the time. And what about your husband? I mean, what? Can we please get that picked up? Yes, ma'am. I'll pick it up. Keep going. I want to know the answer. Uh, uh, I told him when we first met, he even told me he was gay. I love my husband with all my heart. He's my best friend. <laughs> but we haven't had, we haven't done anything ever since, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, we've never, we only had sex that one time. When I was younger, I, uh, I always had no problem being, like, out and open stuff and whatnot, but it just made my life a little bit harder. The Bible says it's wrong. So I married a husband, and I have a baby. Is that all? Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> Your sexuality has nothing to do with spreading the word of Jesus Christ and the Lord in love. Not one thing. I don't know. The way I used to think obviously wasn't working, so my whole idea is to try something new and get myself out of trouble. For Lexi and the other chain gang girls, getting themselves out of trouble is their prime motivation to graduate the program. But for all of them, faced with harsh rules and hard labor, only time will tell. Day 5, 5.45 a.m. Today, the chain faces a more emotionally demanding work detail, burying the county poor. And for one chain gang girl, it's especially heart-wrenching. I have to look nice today if I took you. I'm scared. My name's Lisa Marie Enriquez Garcia. I'm here for false reporting to a police officer. Lisa Enriquez Garcia is a 42-year-old divorced mother and grandmother. Serving a one-month sentence, Lisa is nearing the end of her time on the chain, yeah. but she recently suffered a devastating loss. My dad died while I was in here. 
I didn't go to his funeral. I'm still numb. I haven't cried or nothing because I'm not out there. I haven't accepted it. Maybe I'm in denial, I don't know. That's why I joined Chain Gang. Maybe this is what I needed, some discipline. Learn how to get along with others. Maybe I needed to discipline me inside my soul, you know. I have to let go. Maybe the reality's gonna hit me today, you know. Every other Thursday, the Chain Gang helps bury the county poor. For many of the women, it's a reminder of the paths their troubled lives could take. Today we are going out to do burials. We bury the indigent, the poor, the people that don't have any money. So today you guys are their families. You'll help us get the bodies out of the van, put them on the machine to lower them into the hole, then you'll stand there and be quiet and respectful. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Be extra mindful of where you step. If you're the lead person, you slip and go in, you're pulling four other people with you. Do not grab the silver handles on the boxes. They are there for purely decoration. They'll just snap right off. All right, so chain one and two, come with me. Two moving. Can the chain leader start yeah. moving this way? No, you guys slide back that way. Lord Jesus Christ, Grant that our brother may sleep here in peace until you waken him in glory. Amen. Amen. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> we buried the dead, the poor, the indigent, people who didn't have families. We laid them to rest kind of way of saying bye to my dad. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all... It was very difficult. Very, very difficult, but I did it. As the women offer support, it's only the beginning. They must strive to make it together, facing 30 days on the chain. <laughs> 6 a.m., as the women struggle, life on the chain gets worse. Officers discover a few chain gang girls have committed a serious infraction, cell graffiti. She's got some writing. She's got some pencils up there. Newly appointed chain leader Kylie Marks is singled out. Are you kidding me? You better have all this cleaned up by tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Officers decide that as leader, her infraction is a symptom of growing chain-wide disobedience. Their job site punishment, graffiti cleanup. Just to show them what it's like to have to go in and clean up somebody else's, what I like to call ignorance, as far as going in and defacing other people's property. Cover up the graffiti. We're actually here cleaning up something. I feel like today I am a upstanding citizen. I respect myself today for what I've done. My name is Laura fleck Golston. I'm here for possession of a dangerous narcotic. A 37-year-old college graduate, Laura fleck Golston once worked as a drug rehabilitation counselor. In addition to narcotics possession, Laura is now serving six months for shoplifting, disorderly conduct, and domestic violence charges. I get introduced to methamphetamine drugs, and uh, they're just within a six-month time whirlwinded my life into a lot of charges and a lot of running and a lot of chaos. I have a two and a half year old little girl I love more than anything. And this, my behavior in this place is the only thing that's taking me from her. Laura's daughter is autistic. I used drugs the first five weeks of my pregnancy. I heard this aside just to say that I used drugs for five weeks. But she's an angel. She's just, she's a beautiful angel. For chain gang mothers like Laura, playground job sites offer reminders of the destructive influences of drugs and crime. It's not much of an example for our children when they have gang graffiti and garbage and crack pipes and needles laying around for them. 
That's really not setting the picture of what life is supposed to be. Lester! Can you come over here? What? Please? What's up? We found a crack pipe. <laughs> oh, sure did. It's not the first time I've seen one. <laughs> Whenever they find drug paraphernalia, drugs, tobacco, lighters, syringes, knives, they just let us know and we'll take care of it. For former addicts and criminals, job sites like this one are rife with contraband temptations. Because they'll try to smuggle it back in and use it for their own personal use. Or if it's a needle, they'll try to stick one of the officers with the needle. Uh, who knows where that needle's been. 12 noon, back at chain gang headquarters D-Tower. Officers are on high alert. It's a contraband smuggler's worst nightmare, the mandatory strip search. Ladies up towards the front of the line, bring your boots back to this side. Getting caught with contraband equals getting kicked off the chain, or worse. Boots off, your hair down, step to the other side of the hallway and be quiet. For the inmates, it's an invasive ritual they never get used to. I'm in line to go in that room, strip down, shake my clothes out, spread personal body parts, and um, then I'll be allowed to get dressed and I hope go take a shower and relax because my feet are sore. We keep them separated from each other. That way, if somebody was holding any type of contraband, they don't pass it to somebody that's already been searched on their way out. Then we keep their boots away from them. That way they can try to toss something into their boots or whatnot. What I need for you to do then is I need you to turn around, bend over at the waist, give me a good cough. <laughs> so when you cough, if you cough, something comes out of your, your vagina. And your buttocks. It's supposed to be humiliating. This is all supposed to be a deterrent. So being searched like that, it's a must. Today, the women are all contraband free. After strip search, the chain gang girls get two hours outside their cells. Time to shower, briefly socialize, and accomplish chain business. Most importantly, mandatory cadence and marching practice. After practice, the women return to their cells for the night, but one chain gang girl receives a surprise visit. Right now I'm getting ready to go see the chaplain, and I'm really in hopes that it's to receive my educational materials for my daughter. I have a two and a half year old daughter who four weeks ago started her sign language courses because that's gonna be her primary form of communication. Laura hopes to learn sign language to communicate with her autistic daughter who is unable to speak. She's learning to sign, which is great because I can't tell you how hard it was not being able to communicate with your child. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited, you know? I'm excited that when I get out of here, I'm gonna be able to say, mommy loves you. Mommy loves Olivia, I already know how to sign it. But I just want to learn, you know what I mean? What else do I have to do in here? They want, they want us to learn. They say that this is a time for teaching and learning. Well, I can't think of anything better to learn than how to talk to my child. The scripture that I have for you, listen to Are you able to listen? But this visit has a different purpose, spiritual advising. I was waiting for some materials from him. But you guys are just as good. We're just as good. <laughs> you're just as good because you're going to help me right now. It's so like, yeah, it's really yeah, sad. You wouldn't despair. Laura's hopes to study sign language must wait for another day. I just started crying because it was just like another turn down, I felt like. Like another rejection on something I really want. But um, I just needed to be reminded that I just have to be patient. <sighs> you know? I'm not living on the outside world where I can make everything happen the way I want it, when I want it. I'm not um, out there, I'm in here. Mary Soul is in despair. But for one chain gang girl, the day presents a more difficult problem. Lori Henderson's roommate, Lisa Enriquez Garcia, has just finished a 30-day sentence for lying to a police officer. Oh, oh I'm just gonna meet my friend. She keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> Enriquez, roll up. Are you guys going to miss me? Yes. Lisa leaves behind unfinished business, clashes she and Lori have had with younger chain members. Now, as Lisa prepares to face life on the outside, Lori must face the chain gang on her own. I'm going to go home with you, too. I don't want to be here anymore. Oh, wait, wait. 
right there. With Lisa gone, the chain has an open slot. One hopeful wants to turn her jail record around. 308, roll out for chain gang! Serving one year for armed robbery, inmate Nydra Salgado's currently stuck in what's known as the hole, 30 days of 23-hour isolation and mandatory cell lockdown. At 28 years old, this is Nydra's first time behind bars. Jail is nothing nice. I've been in jail for almost a year now, and I will never come back. On the outside, Nydra worked at a nightclub to support her two children. They're good kids. They go to church with my parents on Sundays, and they wish they could see me more, but it's hard to think of stuff to write to Children so young, you know, and tell them, what do I tell them I'm doing? I'm still in jail. You'd almost rather not have contact with the outside until you get there, because it's a harsh reminder where you are. Nydra was sent to the hole as punishment for a yard infraction. Now her only way to redeem herself is to join the chain gang. But to do it, she must pass a strict personal inspection from the feared Officer Lopez. They say I'm the tough one, you know, be on your guard when Lopez is around. Inmates know exactly what to expect from me all the time. Set it over here in the chair from here. There's your three books, including a Bible. Hands up and look. We have to search everybody. We got to search their property, and we need to search their, their person. Spread your feet to make sure they're not bringing any contraband. Up in the I, I have some trash. What kind of trash? They're my pills. Did the nurses bring them to you? Yes. I was just going to throw it away. And this is exactly why we search the inmates, coming and going, because you never know what they have. You know, this could be a dangerous narcotic that she is supposed to be taking, you know? What if she took off four of them? What side effect? We don't know what the side effect could be. What if another inmate had a reaction that she sold it to? You never know what could happen. Concealing drugs is a severe offense. Joining the chain is not an option. Nydra must start her time all over again in the hole. The chain gang still needs another new member. The officer's final choice, inmate Janice Johnson, is no stranger to military discipline. I went from my daddy's house to Uncle Sam's house to Sheriff Joe's house. The military got me off track, and I'll leave it at that. Yes, they did. My name's Janice Johnson, and I'm here for a paraphernalia charge. Before Janice Johnson's incarceration, she was in the Marine Corps for eight years, serving overseas in Japan, Guam, and Iraq. This is Janice's first time behind bars. A 32-year-old mother of one, she's now serving a two-month sentence. Janice is a self-described crystal meth addict. If you talk to 90% of the people in jail, they all smoke G, meth, and that's what got them here. They forgot who they were before they started smoking. It's not a drug that just affects you, it affects your entire family. If you have friends, you're not gonna have any after you start smoking, because it turns you into something that you're not. It's, it's horrendous and you don't care. And by the time you realize it, it's too late. Everything's already gone. I miss waking up and having breakfast and coffee in the morning. I miss going to lunch with my friends and going to the mall and shopping and not stealing anything at the mall. I miss living. Drugs is not victimless. I mean, your whole family pays. A very selfish person does drugs. And I feel horrible. Day 12, 10 a.m. Job site marching practice. Why are you guys so relaxed? Don't start marching like that. Left, 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 right, right, left, down, stand, back. left, left, turn, left, left, right, right, left. Hold up, don't say any more cadence. Tell them how to do turns. Listen. Chain hold. As the chain struggles, Officers instruct the women to follow ex-Marine Janice Johnson's example. We were going to be counting on her to help out the other inmates with their marching and 
stuff like that due to her prior military background. Tell them how to do the turns. When you get to your turn, it says left turn. When you go left, you pivot with your right foot. You go like this. Pivot with your outside foot. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. Steven. All right, let's try it. Right turn there. Watch her when she turns. The officer's frustration with the inmates grows. Well, pay attention. Especially you guys, chain three. You guys need to follow that line. It's made already there for you. You guys turn. Even after continuous instruction, the chain gang girls fail to march in unison. Is there anybody here that does not know the difference between their right and their left? I ask that because we have had people that do not know. OK, one simple reminder. The foot that has the chain on it, that is your left. Let's try it again. March time, march. My name is Anastasia Maria Villafan, and I'm here for possession of marijuana. This is Anastasia Villafan's sixth day on the chain. For her possession of marijuana conviction, she's serving a three-month sentence. It's her first time behind bars. She hopes the chain gang will help her become a better role model, keeping her son out of trouble. I have a 10-year-old son that uh, can better live my life with this. Teach him not to come here, not to do anything bad. This is not the place to be for anybody. I needed more discipline because I don't want to lose my son for weed, for anything. Anastasia struggled with marching from day one. A self-proclaimed slow learner, she's at high risk of getting kicked off the chain. I was in special ed, just didn't learn how to read. But I'm not ashamed of it. I adapted by asking people for help. If you don't ask for help, you're not gonna get nowhere. So let's try it again. March time, march. Forward, march. She's done. Which one? Anastasia. Tired of her. She can't get in step. She doesn't know her cadences. We've given her plenty of chances. Though Officer Lester singles out Anastasia, there's widespread dissatisfaction with the entire chain. Back at Estrella Jail D Tower, word of growing disciplinary problems reaches Supervisor Sergeant Garcia. The chain officers know their job performance is at stake. What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, they're just frustrating. Marching it means frustrating? I, I find that difficult to believe. When you guys are lined up, you shouldn't be talking to anybody. Your eyes should be focused on your officers or myself, whoever's going to address you. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, what's the answer should be? Okay, you should be doing it in unison. Yes, yes. There we go. Can you see the difference? Yes. Yes, sir. Can you hear the difference? Yes, sir. Okay, when you're marching and when you're speaking, it should be in unison. And I'm not seeing that and I'm not hearing that. It shouldn't take you three times to say, yes, ma'am. Are you guys familiar with the rules? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma okay, so then you're just blatantly disregarding those rules? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, exactly. When our supervisor comes down and finds out that our chain, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's embarrassing on our part because then it looks from her that we're not doing our job because the chain isn't abiding by the rules. As soon as they let you guys out for your time, those cells will be clean from top to bottom. Then you guys go into your marching. I'm pretty sure your shower time will be cut short to figure out how many minutes per shower. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. wow. Have you guys done that much drugs in your life or whatever? What my sergeant just said not five damn minutes ago didn't sink in on anybody. Is there any questions on what needs to be done? No, sir! Get your boots, get in there, and get this done. They want to act like little children, and that's the way they're going to have to be treated. 2 p.m., two-hour recreation. Today, the women are under strict orders. 
Before they shower, they must spend one full hour practicing marching and cadences. But just a few minutes in, there's trouble. 400 pod! What is going on? Jesus. I was getting down there for me. Why is anybody in the shower? What did we say was supposed to happen? Who else is in the shower? I don't know. Her done. Her Sally. Huh? They're done. And what did I say? We said, come in here, clean yourselves, do your practice, and then do your other <laughs> Am I right or am I wrong? Yes, you're right. I'm pretty sure I said it about three damn times. Everybody now, up to yourselves. Lock it down. Whoever's in the shower, you better make it quick and get your ass up to your room now. Anastasia, is that you in the shower? Yeah. Go ahead and roll your shit up when you get out. Why? What do you mean, why? You're in the shower. They told me to get in the shower. Who? Who told you to get in the shower? Who told you to get in the shower? Is your room clean? Yeah, my room's clean. Your room's clean? Yeah. Let's go yeah. check it. What number are you in? She's in nine. Wherever the one is at nine right now, step out of your cell and face the wall. Which bunk is yours? Go up there and turn around and face the wall. Your bed's not made. Well, yeah, it just sat on it. Where's the towel that goes across it? I just took it out. I no, you didn't have it. one, that's why. Is this stuff it. in nice, orderly fashion? No. Is this authorized? No. Is this stuff on the your water bottle authorized? No. How much more trash do you have in here? Here's a bag. Here's another towel. Here's a pair of underwear. Here's another towel. But you don't have any towels to put across your bed, do you? Get a trash bag and roll your stuff up. Am I going back to the yard? No, you're going to the hole. You want to keep arguing? You guys were told. You do not shower your first hour out. How many times do we have to tell you? Your first hour is for practice. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. He wanted a, a reason to throw me off chain gang, and that was his reason. You know, he couldn't give me another chance, but I got to do what I got to do, you know? Will you let me stay? No, step back inside your cell and shut the door. wanted a reason, so he got his reason. I don't need to have a reason to kick you off the chain. Failure to comply with staff instructions. Isn't that part of rule number five? Yes, sir! Anastasia's punishment is firm. She is off the chain, sentenced to solitary lockdown in the hole. Her roommate, Laura Fleck Golston, is under watch. Laura was getting out of the shower. Anastasia was already in the shower. And we talked to him about it last week, about being in the shower. They need to practice first. Golston, you're riding a fine line. You're right on the edge. You're about to fall off. I hear you, sir. And now, all the chain gang girls are at risk for insubordination. Josh, if you, you cannot conform to the chain gang rules, you will no longer be part of the chain gang. You will go back to the hole where you came from. If you didn't come from there, then congratulations. You're going there you're now. Going now. So from now on, there will be no more talking on the bus, no more talking online, nothing. When you're working, you're working. You're not talking. If you guys want us to be hard asses, we can do that too. Welcome to the new chain gang, because the old chain gang is gone. On the next episode of Chain Gang Girls 2, officers threaten to cut the entire chain. If need be, we will do a wholesale clean out, take everybody and get rid of them and bring in 15 new people. It's been done before. While two inmates break an unbreakable rule. Show me your tattoo. As Thanksgiving approaches, troubled chain gang girls crash and burn. She's a bitch. They're stir crazy. And later, a chain leader freedom. faces freedom and the struggle to survive on the outside. Shall we go to jail then? Can I go get high? And all the chain gang girls face their fears of life after graduation.